This is the new Mercedes-Benz S-Class and it's a little bit like a peacock because it's effectively Mercedes doing a display to its competitors like BMW and Audi going, yeah, look at me guys, aren't I wonderful, look what I'm capable of. Now in this video I'm going to talk you through its exterior design, I'm going to show you inside, I'm going to try out some of its technology, I'm going to see how luxurious it is and of course I'm going to take it for a drive. Now if you're thinking about buying a new car, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow where we can help you decide which car to buy and help save you a ton of cash on it as well. Or if you want to, you can just Google CarWow. It's dead easy. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the S-Class's design because it's all a bit controversial. People complain on the internet going, oh my God, I hate the look of it. To tell you the truth, I wasn't convinced by the rear end of the car when I saw pictures of it, but here, seeing it in person, I've changed my mind. I like it. Check out the detail in these tail lamps. Look, oh, it's so intricate. I love that. <laughs> That's really cool. But I do just want to be sure of one thing. Wait a minute. Thank God there are real exhaust pipes in here though you do still have an exaggeration of a surround. Never mind, let's move on down the side. You see the body panels are very smooth. Look at this. It's all very smooth apart from this one strong crease which runs underneath the windows. This particular car is a long wheelbase version. In fact, nine out of 10 S-Classes sold are long wheelbase cars because obviously it's used as a chauffeur car. I like this chrome trim at the bottom here. Looks very elegant. Did you see that? Look, we have poppy, innie and outie door handles. Be gone, just like a Tesla. <laughs> Sorry, Mercedes. I like these wheels. It's a nice design. You've got diamond cuts there, you've got two-tone on them there. Very, very elegant. But now we come to the most controversial part of the car, the front. You see, in the past, it used to be the case that the S-Class would influence the style of the other models lower down the Mercedes range. But now it seems that things are going from the bottom up. You know, it's like the A-Class is influencing the rest of the range. Does that matter? I suppose it just depends whether you're a top or a bottom kind of person. One thing I'm definitely not so sure about, though, is this, look, the grill shape. It's sort of the same shape as an Audi grille. Hmm, don't know why they've done that. Still, overall, I do like the look of this car, but what do you think? In fact, I tell you what, seeing as we're at this Mercedes Classic Center, let me know which you think is the best looking S-Class ever. Is it the first generation model? The second generation car? The third generation one? The fourth generation? The fifth generation? The sixth generation? Or this new seventh generation? Let me know in the comments below. If the outside of this car is controversial, then the interior definitely is because it's very different to the current S-Class. Most noticeable because of these screens. So Mercedes has got rid of loads of buttons because you now control most stuff through this central infotainment system. Now I'm going to go into the full details of what it can do later on in the video. I just want to talk about the design for now. I love how this is integrated into the center console. It looks absolutely stunning. I'm not so sure about this screen here though. It seems a little bit plonked on top of the steering car. I did like the old car with the banker screens. I'm sure I'll get used to this because the screens themselves, the definition is incredible. So is the actual quality in here. This wood trim with the pinstripes, it mimics that on luxury yachts. And the way it all wraps around you as well, it's gorgeous. This car is fully loaded. So we've got the softest leather, the finest materials, and it really, really does feel special in here. Everything feels so luxurious. The switches, all metal. I like what they've done with the light switch, the way it's just up here. It's really nice. The steering wheel as well. It's got wood on the outside, leather on the inside on this one. And of course, the column is electrically operated. Mm. It feels so expensive. And I really like the design. One thing to note, the air vents, they're now square. Whereas on the old car, they were round. It's as though square is the new round. There we go. It is in Mercedes world anyway. Now let's talk about in-car storage. So underneath here, you've got some space. Oh, actually. That release button feels way nicer than on the old car. It's really cheap and nasty in the previous S-Class. This has a, a lovely metallic finish to it. Anyway, I was saying, look, under here, you've got space for your mobile phone. It's got a wireless charging pad there. If you don't have that facility on your phone, there are two USB-C inputs there. And this is lined with a really lovely soft felt. If you want to pet it, like it's a small mammal. Hmm. Weird. Underneath here are your cup holders. They can hold larger bottles, look. Yeah, isn't that lovely? And there's two more USB-C inputs there. It's very modern, it's just all USB-C in here. Then there's some more storage here and another wireless charging pad as well. That's good. Door bins, they look smaller than before, but they do actually hold these bottles. So can't complain about them. There's some more storage just around here. Hello, look. That's where you're gonna leave your wallet and forget about it. 
And then the glove box is a reasonable size. Plus, look, you've got the Mercedes scent in there, which is pumped through the ventilation system to keep things smelling sweet. There is one thing that isn't so sweet, though, and it's this, look. The stalk for the gear selector does feel cheap. It's not becoming of a car that starts from £80,000, and this one, with all the options on it, is going to be well over £100,000. So I suppose I can just kind of fluff up my pillow and kind of just chill out and try and forget about it. And there are some other features that do make up for all of that kind of thing. Like, look at the detailing around this section here. It's lovely with the mood lighting. I like the fact that you don't just have one sun visor. You have two, so that you can completely shade yourself if the sun is getting in your eyes. And then there's leather here for the grab handles as well. And the roof lighting on this car is a really nice fake suede effect. I like just sitting in here. Don't even need to be driving. I just come in here to relax. For the proper S-Class experience, you need to be in the back seat. Now the car is actually slightly more roomy in the back than the previous generation version. And I could do the old knee room and headroom test, but it's pointless because I've got so much space. You can get the car with a three-seater in the back or various other configurations. This has the two-seater first-class seating, so the very top of the range. So if I press this button here, it's going to move the front passenger seat out of the way. It'll recline my chair, pop out my footrest, and then I really can relax in this thing. It takes its time. Come on, you can do it. Bear with me. Ooh, here we go. Under calf support. And finally, my little heel rest. This is great in here. I also like the way that they have this wraparound effect with the wood trim and the ambient lighting. That is really nice ambient lighting, isn't it? And you even get ambient lighting in the seatbelt buckle holder. It's great. This car is fully loaded, so we've got the infotainment screens there, which I can't now reach. Still, I can use this one to control all the functions here in the back and for some of the rest of the car as well. So you've got the removable tablet. That's standard. Obviously, those screens are an upgrade, so I can swipe through different menus and things like that using this if I want to. There's lots of other things to play with as well. If I go in here, we have the cup holders and they're heated or cooled, depending on what you want to do. You've got four zone climate control as well. Underneath here, we have four USB-Cs, two HDMIs, a 12 volt socket, a wireless charging pad, and oh, very expensive feeling tables. Now they are a little bit wobbly. Good job this car's got really good suspension. Through here, you have a hatch which leads into the boot, so you could carry skis, I suppose if you wanted to, or if you want, you can actually upgrade it to have a fridge so you've got champagne and stuff in there. Now, if the sun is bothering you, it doesn't really matter because you can put up your blinds. There go away, sun. Maybe it's the paparazzi annoying you. Then, it's just nice and private back here. There's one other thing I want to show you. So it's quite common in luxury coupes to have little seat belt butlers, but you also get one in the rear here. Look, so if I open the door and then shut it, out he comes. Yeah. Shouldn't have to do too much manually in an S-Class. I mean, this is the way to travel, isn't it? Don't want to get out of here. Unfortunately, I can't rest because I need to continue with this review. So let's talk about the boot. Obviously, you get an electrically operated tailgate because if you've got an S-Class, you can't be expected to lift it yourself. Now, there's some luxury items back here. Look, the carpets are even nice and plush and you've got a little shopping bag hook there. There's plenty of space for all your luxury shopping as well if you've been to Harrods, which is good. So the capacity is 550 litres, which is 20 litres more than on the old S-Class. Something to note though, if you go for the reclining seats or the fridge, you get less boot capacity. You also get less boot capacity if you go for one of the hybrid versions. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the new Mercedes S-Class. The car has a weird ability to teleport you two months into the future and into a Miserable car park in England, with a change of clothes. It must have something to do with COVID. The shiny air vents on the top of the dash really reflect in the windscreen, and it's particularly bad depending on where the sun is, and it's quite distracting. This piano black plastic looks really nice, but it smudges super easily. Look at that. Yeah. Also, it scratches as well. This is a brand new car, and already it's got this nasty little scratch in it there. Ooh. The button for changing your driving mode is down here. 
which may not seem like too much of a problem. When you're driving along though, you do have to look down because it's a touch sensitive button. So you have to do that to press it. And then if you want to suddenly jump to a different setting, you then have to press the screen. Why don't they just have the rotary dial like they have on AMG cars? It's just much better having it on the steering wheel. Oh, and I bet that when we get this car in the UK and they move the steering wheel across, they won't move these buttons across either. So then us poor English people will have to reach even further. The rear doors are so huge and open so wide that to open them all the way, you really have to like, oh, come on. And then when you want to shut them, you're obviously leaning out the car. Sort of needs that effect that you get in the Rolls Royce Ghost where you press a button and the door shut and open for you. Then of course, you can just get your chauffeur to do it, I guess. If you're a chauffeur, you may not be too keen on the fact that your rear passenger can actually monitor your throttle and your brake inputs. Look at that. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. And so you could be in a situation where your VIP says to you, listen, Mr. Chauffeur, if I see more than 20% on either of those, you're fired. For such an expensive, luxurious car, the key's a little bit on the cheap feeling side. So it reminds me of one of those Wi-Fi dongles. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. You can get this car with rear wheel steering, which isn't uncommon, you can get it on other cars. However, on other cars, they move the back wheels by about three degrees. On this S-Class, it can move up to 10 degrees. Look at this. So when you're going slowly, it'll move the back wheel in the opposite direction to the front, and it reduces the turning circle by two meters. That means that this huge barge is as maneuverable as a little hatchback. Look at this, I'm going round in circles. <laughs> in quite a small space, considering how big this car is. Obviously, when you're going quicker, then the back wheels move in the same direction as the front to aid your high speed stability. This is the best surround view camera I've seen on any car ever. The detail is incredible. And look at this, right? I can knock around the car. And it is this car in the right colour, but check this out. If I turn the steering wheel, you will actually see the wheels turn on the image. If I put the indicator on, it goes on on the image. This is utterly brilliant and it makes it so easy to park it in tight spaces and maneuver through those horrible width restrictors. You can get digital headlights for this car and they contain 1.3 million tiny little mirrors which are able to direct the light beam precisely where the car wants it to go. So it can do the usual thing of blanking out part of its beam so you don't dazzle oncoming drivers, but it can also highlight pedestrians at the side of the road. And that's not all. It can even project images onto the road to give you guidance as the driver. You're not allowed to do that just yet due to laws, but it is technically possible. You know how most cars with the blind spot monitoring, you'll get like a flashing little light here on the wing mirror when a car's in your blind spot. On this S-Class, this whole LED strip of ambient lighting flashes, so it really gets your attention. This car is filled with electric motors. So there's 20 different motors used in the ventilation system to control all the flaps. Then there's 19 motors in the seats. You've got eight for adjustment. You've got an extra one for your lumbar support. Then there are five for the ventilation system within the seat. Um, by the way, the machine that punches the holes in the seat has 16,000 needles on it. Then there's four other motors for your massage function. And there's 10 different massage programs to choose from, but that's not all. There are even vibration pads built into the seat, connected to the stereo, which actually amplify the bass so you feel it through your back. Now let's talk about the S-Class's infotainment system because it really is a highlight. So this main screen uses OLED technology and it's very crisp, very bright, super responsive, and it runs the usual MBUX operating system, so it's Mercedes' latest system, which is the best in the business, if you ask me. The route includes toll roads. Now, it does have voice commands, and sometimes it does chirp up like another Mercedes. It's generally quite good, so it does understand things such as, Hey Mercedes! How may I help you? My bottom is cold. The phone is unavailable. You can now connect to your phone. Okay, so, it's not perfect. Like with many systems, sometimes it doesn't. The bicycle image systems is 1.37 Swedish krona on the Stockholm Stock Exchange, up about 3.79% since previous close. Well, that's all very interesting, Mercedes, but it's nothing to do with what I asked you to do, is it? It can do things like programming your sat nav, it can set the temperature, but it doesn't work perfectly as you just witness for yourself. I often don't bother with these voice command systems, they do my head in. It does have a sense of humour though. Let, let me just try one last thing. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Tell me a joke. 
Why did the tomato blush? Because it saw the salad dressing. Let's move on for the voice commands. So I wouldn't bother with that. I just use the touch screen. It's fairly intuitive. And while the climate control buttons are actually run through the touch screen, it's fine because the screen has haptic feedback. So it'll vibrate like your mobile phone when you touch it. Let's move on to the digital driver's display because this is special. So as before, you can control it using the buttons on the steering wheel. They're touch and press. So I don't like the fact that they're touch and press because that gets a bit confusing as you don't know which one to do. Do you touch? swipe or do you press anyhow you can change the view of it and the graphics are good once again very sharp very clear lots of information on there it has a 3d effect i can make all the images on there 3d so the cameras behind the screen are actually monitoring my eyes and they're doing two images so when you're looking at it with two eyes then you get this 3d effect it doesn't actually work on the cameras but i can give you an effect of it from the rear so if i'm moving around it's monitoring where my eyes are and it's sort of moving and adjusting the image so it looks 3d what you'll be picking up on the camera is that the image is starting to shake that's the best way i can illustrate it you have to be sat here with two eyes looking at it and it is insane. In fact, it's so insane that I find it a little bit off-putting, so I'm just gonna drive around with it normal. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. And I think I'm saying the word brilliant quite a lot in this video because this car is an absolute tech fest. Time to talk about money. So the new Mercedes S-Class starts from just under £79,000. However, look at this, right? You can save an average of £6,000 off one through CarWow already, and it's brand new. Now, if you'd like to see how much money you could save on a new car, put a little link should be popping out in the top right hand corner of the screen. You can click on that and go to CarWow and see how much you can save on an S-Class or any new car for that matter. Alternatively, after this video, you can just Google help me CarWow and my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Now let's talk about the engine choices on the S-Class. So here in the UK, you get the S500, which is what this car is, and it has a three litre straight six turbo petrol with 435 horsepower. Then there's an S350D with a 2.9 litre turbo diesel straight six with 286 horsepower. Then the S400D, which has a 2.9 litre straight six turbo diesel, with 330 horsepower. Then there's the 580E, which has a three litre straight six turbo petrol plus an electric motor for 510 horsepower. And thanks to its 28 kilowatt hour battery pack, it has an electric only range of 64 miles. Then eventually there'll be an S63 model with a twin turbo V8 with over 600 horsepower. Now all S classes get a nine speed automatic gearbox and air suspension as standard. Let's see what this S-Class is like to drive. I've picked it up at Mercedes-Benz UK and maneuvering around the car park is super easy. In fact, there is a mini roundabout here. I'm gonna just circumnavigate it a couple of times to show off the rear wheel steering. Look at this. Can I get round? It's quite tight here. Can I get round with that curbing? I'm gonna press this button to have a look around the car, make sure that I'm not gonna curb the wheels Oh, that 360 degree view is absolutely brilliant. Uh, while I'm here, there's a parking space. Can I fit in this parking space? A parking settings on, so auto park will go on now. The car is actually sensing around itself. Can you see that blue line around it? It's sensing. Now I'm gonna try and park. It doesn't think I can fit in there. Oh, oh yeah, it does. Here we go. Press this button down here, and I essentially have to do nothing. The car is gonna do absolutely everything, all the steering brake and accelerator and it's going to put me into this parking space look feet are doing nothing is it going to curb the wheels i don't trust it is it going to curb the wheels uh, i'm so nervous but no it's so good that you don't have to do anything that is so close that i mean that <laughs> god it's so close to see that on the camera wow to exit the parking space with the active parking, tap here, yes. Now what it should do, start parking with the parking button under display. There we go. Go. There we go. Be ready to brake, it says. Now what it's gonna do is use my rear wheel steering and slightly crab the car out. So both wheels are going like that when I move to the side to help me get out. This is brilliant. I'm doing nothing. I'm literally doing nothing. Oh, it wants me to steer now. There we go. <laughs> Good old tech. 
Now, my satellite navigation is telling me to go right, and I can see chevrons in the heads-up display, which match the chevrons down here telling me to go right on the augmented reality satellite navigation screen, which is using the camera feed ahead showing real-time images of the road and superimposing them on the map. So that combination of the two of them is absolutely brilliant. First thing I notice <laughs> when you're driving along in this is just how comfortable the car is. The air suspension is excellent. So you've got cameras up there and what they're doing is monitoring the road and they can spot lumps and bumps. They'll slacken off the suspension when you're about to drive over any kind of imperfection. And that means that you really don't feel much at all. This engine's quiet as well very smooth, very quiet. So I'm at a place called Milton Keynes, it's full of roundabouts. And roundabouts can be fun, so let's just check the handling and the acceleration out of a roundabout. Oh, <laughs> it goes all right actually this. Oh, it's a very smooth engine, very, very smooth and powerful. The steering, it's precise, but it's not heavy. It's nice and light and that really helps when you're just cruising about. The way this thing just wafts up the road, it's like you're just flying above the surface of the road on a cushion of air, it really is. Very, very nice. I'm actually looking for bumps and there's a bump. No, it doesn't seem to upset it. Even the real sharp bumps, like expansion joints, they can really send a jolt through air suspension systems, but this one deals with them pretty well. Do you want to try something? Look at that, look at that, do you see that? Now what I did, was something very stupid but also very brave and I wanted to do the illustration for you. I didn't touch the brake when I was approaching the back of that car. I thought, let's see if the car will automatically stop and it did. It beeped, it pulled my seatbelt tight and it automatically braked the car to stop me smashing into the back of it. There's so many sensors and everything just checking around this car. It is insane. Look, you can see on this image here, it's just scanning around the side of the car at all times. Now, on a dual carriageway, I'm going to put the automated cruise control on. It's got lane keeping assist, so it'll steer to keep me in lane. And obviously, you can set the radar guidance, so it'll keep you a safe distance from the car in front. And I can override it at any time by using the accelerator or the brake, like now, because we're going around a roundabout, Let's check the handling out. Oh, a bit of body lean, but then it is a luxury barge. <laughs> but it grips all right. And the steering is sharp. Okay, cruise control back on again. And this is really cool because I can use it just on normal roads as well as on the motorway. So it'll just keep me a safe distance from the car in front. It's like an extra pair of eyes. It'll steer to keep me in lane. So good using cruise control like this to do all the work for you. I'm basically driving around the streets using cruise control and the car is doing everything for me. It's braking, it's accelerating, it's helping with the steering. The thing about this cruise control system that when you're on the motorway, it can go pretty much full autonomous. It can steer to go into different lanes, leave at junctions, all that kind of stuff. And you can basically sit there and do nothing, not touch the steering wheel at all. Unfortunately, while the car can do that, the law doesn't allow the car to do that. But eventually the laws will change and the car will be ready to go. It can also do this thing where it can park itself. And I don't mean that it can just park itself like I showed you earlier. You can get out of the car, press a button, on your app, on your phone, and the car will park itself and go off and find a parking space in a garage. It's incredible. Once again, it can't do that yet because of legal reasons, but technically it can do it. It's capable of doing that. This is a deeply impressive car that can do it all. It really can. And when it comes to just driving long distances in comfort and with technology to help keep you safe and make your journey as easy as possible, there is no other car that can beat this. It really is S-class leading. So then what's my final verdict on the new Mercedes S-class? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the S-class if you're after a luxury limousine because it's absolutely awesome. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, comment below of any kind of other videos you'd like us to do. If you want to watch some more videos, click on the windows there. And if you click on the box, you can download the CarWow app. It's completely free. You can use it to like browse all our reviews and see how much money we can save you on a new car. On average, you can save £3,600. That's right. Also, it has a special number plate reader, so you can scan any car's number plate and it'll tell you how much that car is currently worth. Download it. It's completely free.